Well, I've had the privilege of serving at World Mission for nearly 25 years and have seen a lot of places around the world. I was familiar with Pakistan from the standpoint it's the second most populated Muslim country in the world. And when I walked into these brick kilns for the first time, it was like, a, it was almost a shock. I've been in the poorest of poor villages in the world. I've seen atrocities. I've been around genocide. But what I saw in the eyes of these people, um, I just wasn't prepared for. What I learned about the brick kilns in Pakistan is that there's nearly 20,000 of them scattered throughout the landscape. And all of these brick kilns are owned by Muslim leaders. And these people are treated worse than animals. Um, we didn't meet a single woman who had not been sexually abused, raped at the discretion whenever the brick kiln owner or his cronies would want to. Uh, men who would be um, essentially chained to a tree for drinking water at the wrong time of the day. But I think even worse than the physical trauma, and it's the worst of this world, and in any sense you want to look at it, it's the worst physical of this world. The thing that concerned us more is the worst of the next world, not having access to the gospel. When we were driving up to the first brick kiln, um, our partners are Pakistani, uh, national leaders who love these people. And they looked at me and they said, we want you to share the gospel. And we were driving in. As I said, I'd, I've never experienced anything like this. And I just asked the Lord to give me something to share with these people, something that would encourage them. And God put on our heart to just simply do one thing. And that was to introduce these slaves to your best friend. It is free. And so we talked about our best friend. And we said how he's closer than a brother, and he's with us through our most difficult days, our most traumatic moments, and that he never leaves us, he never gives up on us, he never lets us down. And uh, we asked them who would like to meet our best friend, and the hands, as you can imagine, just went up as by swarms of people. And at that time is when we shared with them about Jesus, the Son of God, who died for them, gave his life for them, and loves them very much, and wants to, yeah, be their best friend. We're grateful that you've given her a heart of forgiveness. It was like revival fire going through these brick kilns, and the people responded uh, to the good news of Jesus Christ. So Lord, right now in Jesus' name, heal this body, Lord. When you go into a place as desperate as the brick kilns in Pakistan, um, it's, it's so daunting, it's, it's just overwhelming, the physical despair. And always when you're leaving, you're feeling like you could have done more. But when you leave behind a solar-powered audio Bible that we call the treasure, um, and realize that there's nothing better that you could possibly give to them because they're feeding their soul. And as many as 10 hours during their 14-hour workdays just listening and absorbing the Word of God because in this culture in Pakistan, the people are oral learners, which means they prefer to learn in a non-literate way, and reading a, a Bible and carrying it around in the brick kilns is just not an option. You're working every single moment of the day, pushing wheelbarrows and slopping mud into these forms and carrying them into the brick kilns and out of the brick kilns. But the treasure, as it sits in the bricks and alongside the wheelbarrow, it plays all day long. I would say, that within the brick kilns in Pakistan are some of the most powerful discipleship-making environments of anywhere in the world, as these hearts have been wide open to the gospel. And now, they're listening to the treasure. On one hand, we're super excited. On the other hand, we're just asking the Lord, what, what can we do, what's possible? And it's, it's in that moment that I was just kind of wrestling with that feeling of satisfaction, of seeing slaves come to know Jesus, but frustration and the, the idea of that they continue to be treated like this. And it was in that moment that I saw slaves line up. And I thought, my God, this is, Almost like you can't too much to handle because you can tell they're, they're wanting to greet you, thank you for coming and that kind of a thing. And so I, I got in line and I just wanted to give them all a hug and love them. And they reached their hand out to me and I could tell there was something in their hand. And these slaves had gone to their like doghouse comparable uh, 
housing uh, complexes and got all the money they had. I have it today. <laughs> it's the most precious gift World Missions ever received. As slave after slave put dollars, rupees, Pakistani rupees into our hands. That was their life savings. That's all they had. And they simply said two things. Would you go to other brick kilns and share the message that you shared with us? And would you give them more of these treasures?